Well, today I'm talking about nutrition for beautiful skin. So we all want great skin and our nutrition really plays an important role with that. Now, symptoms that we can have skin inflammation, and this is so common in our society, acne or pimples, blisters, eczema, wrinkles, age spots, rashes, cracked or raw skin, itching or burning skin, redness or skin warmth, and skin thickening or scaliness. And these are all signs that there's inflammation that's impacting the skin. And so when we look at young skin versus skin that is aging, we see a big difference in the, um, <clears throat> the elastin tissue, which is very pliable tissue that gives the skin the ability to bend and flex, and also the collagen tissue, right? So the key collagen, which, are, which is the most abundant structural protein in the skin. And so that's really what makes up the dermis. And then you've got uh, elastin in there as well. And again, that gives it more bend and flex. And as our skin ages, oxidative stress breaks down the collagen and elastin fibers within the epidermis and the dermis, making the skin weak and allowing wrinkles to form. Now there's a process called autophagy where the body actually breaks down damaged cells and cellular organelles like mitochondria takes the raw materials and rebuilds itself. It's like recycling, taking out the trash, recycling it and regenerating the cells. And that's a natural mechanism that stands to reduce the effects of aging on the skin. There's also an enzyme called a lactase and that a lactase breaks down elastin when it's in balance when the enzyme is imbalanced with the normal production of elastin, it's totally fine because we need to break down older damaged tissue and rebuild it with new healthy tissue. However, as people age and when we have higher levels of inflammation in the body, we get higher le levels of elastase, this enzyme that breaks down elastin, and then we're not able to produce enough healthy elastin. So we end up with, um, you know, really damaged and um, senescent, older damaged elastin fibers that don't give the skin the kind of pliability and flexibility that it should have. And we end up with wrinkles and age spots. And so seven key foods that damage the skin. These are the things that we want to really be careful with. Sugar, of course, sugar elevates our blood sugar and elevated blood sugar creates advanced glycation end products. These AGEs actually are sugar that binds to proteins in the bloodstream and it becomes highly reactive and creates massive reactive oxygen species, massive oxidative stress that inflames and damages tissue, really damages the skin cells. So sugar is one of the key ones. It's also associated with acne. So when you know teenagers or adults have acne, one of the key things we think about is sugar, high sugar diets. You also have processed vegetable oils, corn oils, soybeans, safflower, cottonseed, peanut oil. These oils create chronic inflammation. They drive up inflammatory prostaglandins, which are cellular messengers that turn on inflammatory signals. And that drives up inflammation and ages the skin. So we want to avoid the processed vegetable oils. We want to avoid highly processed chocolate. It has, you know, chocolate itself, cacao has a lot of antioxidants. However, when you process it, you reduce those antioxidants. And then a lot of times they're throwing in processed vegetable oils or throwing in conventional dairy, sugar in there, and it really becomes a major problem. And uh, that can be a, a significant factor when it comes to skin. Soft drinks, of course, high in fructose, as well as you know other forms of sugar and flavorings and preservatives, things like that that are really, uh, again, drive up oxidative stress and inflammation for the skin. You've got conventional dairy. That's a common one that I'll take out of people's diets and we'll see differences when it comes to eczema, when it comes to acne. So that's a big one. And then trans fats, that's going to be your hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated oils. One of the worst things you can do for your skin when you consume trans fats, as well as these processed high omega-6 vegetable oils, these become rancid fats and they get into your cell membranes and they restrict, they, they, they block optimal hormone expression and they drive up inflammatory compounds that are produced by the cell. So you get more inflammation, you get less responsiveness from the hormones, um, you get a higher prevalence of bacterial infections in the skin. 
So you have a lot of problems when you do that. And then of course, fried foods, fried foods are going to be a combination of processed vegetable oils, mm -hmm. because that's typically what they're frying them in rancid fats. And then also they're producing a really damaged protein called acrylamide that's highly reactive and uh, really causes problems with the skin, endothelial lining of the blood vessels, uh, brain really damages the brain. And of course, all these foods that I just mentioned are damaging for all parts of the body. So not just the skin, because we're a holistic being. However, if you do want healthy skin, you know, you're going to want to follow nutrition strategies they are good for your whole body. Um, and that would include drinking more clean filtered water. You really want to hydrate well. You want your skin to be really well hydrated. The people that hydrate well, you can just tell a difference. They have better glow in their skin. Um, they feel better. They have more energy. They have you know less you know slower aging processes with their skin. You want to eat an abundance of green leafy vegetables. The chlorophyll in these green leafies really helps to bind and detoxify different toxic agents. And so green leafy vegetables are also rich in B vitamins or rich in magnesium, potassium, a lot of different compounds that support detoxification, support really good skin health, silica rich foods. So foods that are rich in silica, silica is a key mineral that's important for detoxification, also important for skin health. So you're gonna have things like cucumbers, celery, and carrots that are all really good there. Antioxidant rich berries, lemons, and limes, where you get a lot of vitamin C, bioflavonoids, you get things from berries like anthocyanins, uh, which are rich, you know, you have a lot of those in uh, blueberries and blackberries. You have things like elagic acid and raspberries that are so good for the skin. You have quercetin uh, in, in things like cranberries as well as elderberries. It's all really, really good for skin health. Practicing intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is going to help turn up autophagy, which is where you break down these older damaged cells rebuild new healthy cells. It also increases human growth hormone. Human growth hormone is really critical for healthy collagen production throughout the body. So we're talking about healthy joints, healthy skin, healthy nails, healthy gut lining. Intermittent fasting is one of the very best things for helping with HGH production. The better your HGH, the better your skin health is going to be. So um, intermittent fasting, I recommend eating your meals in like a six to eight hour eating window on a, on a, on a daily basis for some people, you know, maybe just three days a week, uh, if you're very, very lean, but then one day a week, I recommend really pushing your fast a little bit longer, 20 to 24 hours. That will give you the best benefits that will really drive up autophagy, fat burning, drive down inflammation, drive down oxidative stress and allow your skin to really heal, rebuild and uh, strengthen those collagen and elastin fibers. We want to use different herbs like turmeric, basil, rosemary, ginger, oregano, and thyme. These are great antimicrobials. They also reduce inflammation in the body, reduce oxidative stress, and they actually turn up autophagy as well. So they help break down those older damaged uh, elastin and collagen fibers and recycle those components to build new, healthy, young, vibrant, stress-resilient elastin and collagen tissue to support healthy skin. We want to eat a lot of healthy fats. You know, we need those healthy fats. They're going to really support the right moisture production, the right um, pH on our skin. You know, when we eat a lot of sugar. We create an environment that's ripe for uh, different pathogens. We actually cause disruption in the skin microbiome. When we eat these healthy fats, they really help to modulate that and really help provide the right moisture, the right amount of sebum to have a healthy uh, skin microbiome. So things like avocados, olives, coconut fats, really good here. Zinc is one of the most important minerals when it comes to good skin health, keeping inflammation under control, uh, improving skin health. In fact, when people have acne, we know that that's related to zinc deficiencies. And so zinc is so critical here the best zinc rich foods are going to be grass fed meats, pasture raised eggs, wild caught seafood, like oysters and wild caught salmon and pumpkin seeds from a vegetarian source, uh, fermented foods, sauerkraut, pickles, kimchi, apple cider, vinegar, coconut water, kefir. These things have a lot of prebiotics, probiotics, and postbiotics. Postbiotics are, uh, like short chain fatty acids, like butyric acid, acetic acid, things like that, that, uh, are really, really good for, tightening up the tight junction in the gut. So helping support 
strengthen the gut lining, prevent against leaky gut. And that really reduces inflammation in the body. Um, they also help support the gut microbiome and the gut mucosa for a better immune response in the gut. And all of that, when you have problems with your skin, we have to be thinking problems in the gut. So leaky gut equals leaky skin, and it's going to cause a lot of different issues. And so fermented foods can be extremely helpful here. Bone broths, collagen protein, organ meats, all nutrient dense, rich in collagen protein, collagen peptides, things like glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, glucosamine, chondroitin, that are all powerful components of good skin health. So all of that super important. That's what we need to be thinking when it comes to a nutrition plan, getting a lot of zinc rich, grass fed uh, meats, wild caught, uh, wild caught seafood, getting a lot of uh, dark green leafies, silica rich foods, again, cucumbers, celery, carrots, antioxidant rich berries, adding in the herbs and uh, healthy fats, as well as getting the intermittent fasting in so critical here. And that's really what we want to focus on for nutrition tips for beautiful skin. Now, my top supplement when it comes to skin health is actually our immunocharge product because this has clinical doses of zinc, vitamin D. It also has vitamin C, clinical doses of vitamin C, N-acetylcysteine, which is your glutathione supporting agent, your glutathione supporting amino acid. Um, glutathione, we know, protects the skin. It also protects the immune system. This also has magnesium in it. It also has resveratrol and quercetin in clinical doses. And those are two of the most powerful compounds when it comes to overall skin health and immune health, resveratrol and quercetin. So when you combine resveratrol, quercetin, zinc, N-acetylcysteine, vitamin D, and vitamin C, and then also this has selenium in it and vitamin A, that combo really helps uh, protect collagen tissue, protect the elastin tissue, and supports really great skin health. So check that out. Check out the Immunocharge. You can check it out on my website. Just use the coupon code Jockers, actually Immune30. Actually, will save you 30% off on that product. Immune30 at checkout for Immunocharge. So check that out. Really powerful immune product, also great for the skin. Now let's talk about toxins that are found in your skincare products. We know experts estimate that women apply 168 skincare products every day. Men apply around 85. When these chemicals are applied to the skin, it takes as little as 26 seconds for them to penetrate the skin barrier and get into the bloodstream. A lot of these chemicals, things like parabens and uh, phthalates, and uh, you know all these different types of sodium lauryl sulfates and things like that are associated with hormonal and reproductive problems. They're estrogen uh, mimickers, so they they cause hormonal hormonal imbalances between estrogen, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone. So they can cause reproductive problems, birth defects, weight loss resistance. They can really overburden the liver, um, which can cause poor uh, poor conversion of thyroid hormone. So inactive thyroid hormone T4 to active T3, which can cause problems with losing weight, burning fat for fuel. They can also cause autoimmunity, learning disorders, infertility, and they can lead to different types of cancer for women, breast and uterine ovarian cancer for men, prostate and colon cancer. So we really have to be careful about what we put on our skin. And we should be thinking of anything we put on our skin. We should be thinking about we should be considering that food because it's actually going to cross through our skin barrier. So it's going to cross into our bloodstream transdermally and it's going to get into our blood and we're, you know, it's going to get to our liver. It's going to get um, into all the major cells of the body. So what are we feeding our skin? That's what we got to look at. We know that parabens are chemicals used to prevent the growth of mold, bacteria, and yeast. They're added to cosmetics and personal care products for increased shelf life and stability but they can be really problematic, okay? And so they're in a lot of different products. They're banned in the European Union and, J and Japan, and they're linked to breast cancer. And so this is what you look for on the label. You wanna make sure you're not taking in anything, putting anything on your skin with ethylparaben, butylparaben, methylparaben, uh, propylparaben, basically anything ending in parabens. So we gotta look out for that. You also have things like polyethylene glycol compounds or PEGs. These are widespread in household products from personal care to cleaners. 
And they are ingredients commonly derived from petroleum. And they're commonly used in skincare and hair color products, uh, such as you know, different thickeners, softeners, and solvents. They help enhance the absorption of ingredients into the skin. So that's not what we want. Um, they're going to actually increase the absorption of different ingredients. And usually they're in products that have a whole bunch of other toxins. So all those toxins are getting into the skin. It's going to drive up more oxidative stress. So we want to make sure we avoid that. So read labels to avoid all ingredients containing the acronym PEG. So if we're seeing PEG, polyethylene glycol, polyethylene glycols, right? Then we want to avoid those. Okay, now let's talk about the top eight anti-aging ingredients for healthy skin. So these are kind of things we're looking for when we are looking for skincare. We want to have these types of ingredients. Jojoba oil. Jojoba oil is very rich in vitamin E. You got green tea, which has epigalactin catechins, EGCGs that are known to delay collagen aging. You have things like aloe vera, which is you know one of the most well-used, well-known, and best things for your skin, right? These polysaccharides, it's got a ton of, you know, really hydrating water and minerals, as well as these polysaccharides to support your skin. Sunflower seed oil, very rich in vitamin E. You got camu camu and Indian gooseberry, which are two of the most vitamin C rich uh, plants. And vitamin C, I didn't mention this with the nutrition, but you know, we really want a lot of vitamin C because that is actually critical for collagen production. We need vitamin C for collagen production and it protects against oxidative stress on the skin. So camu camu berry, Indian gooseberry, really great for adding to any sort of skincare. When you're looking for skincare, getting something with those in it. Also astaxanthin, which is perhaps the most powerful antioxidant for the skin. 500 times more powerful than vitamin E, 6,000 times more powerful than vitamin C. So very impressive. Astaxanthin, we find that in red algae or in like salmon, for example. And you look at salmon, wild-caught salmon, which are one of the best foods you can consume for healthy skin. They have omega-3 fatty acids, which are super critical for skin health. They have um, zinc, right? We've already talked about how important that is. And then on top of that, they also have astaxanthin and and you think about wild caught salmon, they swim upstream against the rapids and they can jump out of the water. I mean, up to like 10 or 15 feet out of the water. They have this incredible strength, incredible ability to buffer oxidative stress and produce tremendously high amounts of energy in their mitochondria. And what's given, what gives them credit for that is the omega-3 fats, as well as the astaxanthin. So, so, so important there. Um, and so look for skincare that has astaxanthin in it. And then also maple leaf extract. Most people don't know about this, but maple leaf extract has these powerful compounds called glucotol core gallotannin. So they're tannin antioxidants. They're called GCGs, glucotol core gallotannins. And what they do is they actually inhibit elastase. And again, as you're aging, you get this increased activity of elastase breaking down the elastin tissue. So you get um, damaged, you know, senescent older uh, and, and more, uh, you know, basically less stress resilient uh, elastin tissue because of the overactivity of the elastase enzyme. So by inhibiting that, maple leaf extract is really powerful. In fact, researchers actually call it plant based Botox because people notice less sagging and damage to their skin when they're using maple leaf extract, particularly red maple leaf extract on their skin because of the GCG compounds. So again, let's go into a little bit of these. Jojoba oil, very well known. It's in most natural healthy skincare products. It's a liquid wax ester that was once prized by Native American tribes who used it for wounds and damaged skin. The makeup of jojoba oil is almost identical to human sebum, which allows it to deeply moisturize the skin balance oil production, and strengthen the skin's natural barrier. So again, it moisturizes the skin, nourishes and heals dry skin, relieves sunburns, can help fade fine lines and wrinkles, boosts the skin's glow, and soothes eczema and acne-prone skin. So super powerful stuff here. Um, you know, This is what we're looking for as kind of like a base, kind of a foundation for our skincare. And then you, know, you throw in your antioxidants, again, like green tea. Green tea is rich in tannins. Tannins have this astringent property, which make it a great gentle toner. 
that simultaneously reduces redness and helps calm stress skin. They've got polyphenols. The most well-known is, you know, your, your EGCG, right? And that, you know, these antioxidants protect the skin against free radicals and against sun damage. Um, and then you got, you know, your catechins, which are again, EGCG, it's these polyphenols, right? And they're known for their ability to kill bacteria, including acne causing uh, bacteria. So catechins, the catechin polyphenols and the tannins really make green tea a winner when it comes to skincare products. And then just drinking green tea in general, so good for your body as well. Aloe vera, again, I talked about that. That's one of the most well-known as well for good skin. Most people know about putting that on sun damaged skin. And why is it so good? It's made up of 98% water and it's, you know, this structured water that really gets into the cells, right? And moves toxins in and out, helps buffer oxidative stress. There's over 130 plant compounds, including vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, key polysaccharides to support your immune system, enzymes, and amino acids. Really hydrates skin, keeps moisture locked in the skin, which gives you kind of more of the plump, plump, really healthy glow. Um, supports collagen and elastin production, reduces fine lines and wrinkles, improves skin elasticity. So the skin is more resilient to stress. And again, we know about aloe vera for, for soothing burns, cuts, and rashes, of course. Uh, sunflower seed oil, very rich source of vitamin E, very moisturizing, protects the skin's natural barrier, really good for the natural microbiome of the skin, reduces fine lines and wrinkles, and improves dry or flaky skin. So very good for moisturization. Camu camu berry, uh, again, one of the most one of the most rich sources of vitamin C in the world. It's a small berry-like fruit native to the Amazon rainforest, and it has roughly thirty to sixty times the amount of vitamin C found in oranges. Wow, so incredible! It's also got a lot of carotenoid, like beta carotene, lutein, zeaxanthin, these carotenoid antioxidants as well which are all really supportive for overall skin health. So reduces inflammation and the effects of aging. So that is a really good one to have um, in your skincare products. We talked about astaxanthin, so powerful when it comes to skin health. It reduces fine lines and wrinkles in your skin by creating and regenerating, uh, you know, and, and prevents collagen damage from the cell, right? Membranes and eliminates inflammation. So it's really, really good for protecting the skin. So good for the body. Um, amla berry, powerful. Indian gooseberry, also known as amla, is a staple in Ayurvedic medicine. It's considered a rejuvenator and a longevity promoter. It's called the great rejuvenator. It's a key ingredient in the revered formula known as triphala, which is basically like three fruits. That means three fruits, triphala in Ayurvedic medicine. And amla is one of the key ones in there. Um, very high in antioxidants, again, vitamin C, gently exfoliates the skin, restores natural glow and skin tone. It's also shown to actually lighten and brighten complexion. So it gives you better glow. So using that um, topically, very, very helpful for skin health, amla berry. So, and then of course, red leaf, red maple leaf extract I already talked about. Um, and the brand of skincare that I personally use and recommend, it's called Purity Woods. And it has all these things I've been talking about. They have this amazing cream. It's called Age Defying Dream Cream. It's made from over 25 of nature's premier USDA certified organic skin botanicals in one formula. So it's got the astaxanthin in there. It's got the jojoba, the green tea. It's got sunflower seed oil. Um, aloe vera. It's also got German chamomile, which contains unique antioxidants and compounds that soothe the skin and promote tighter, more plump looking skin. It's also got cacao seed butter, cacao seed, which also has epigalactic catechins. So those catechin polyphenols um, that are very, very anti-aging and improve skin elasticity, skin tone, and collagen formation. And this also has the red maple leaf extract, which again has the GCGs those glucotol core gallotannins that inhibit elastase. Again, red maple leaf extract is known as plant-based Botox, right? So really powerful. You should be looking for that. If you're looking for a really good skin cream, that should be in there, some form of maple leaf extract, okay? And when you get all of these things together in something like the age-defying dream cream, 
It really counteracts extreme dryness and protects your skin from dehydration. And dehydration is a foundation for skin damage. You don't want your skin being dehydrated. You want to make sure you're keeping it hydrated. You do that by staying hydrated yourself, just drinking a good enough amount of water, but then also putting on products that help lock the water and the moisture into your skin. Um, these, these ingredients help calm and soothe and reduce inflammation in your skin, and they neutralize and protect skin from free radical damage. They inhibit bacteria uh, and other infections, fungal infections, different things like that, that will damage your skin. They really help to balance the skin microbiome. They hydrate and moisturize the skin, and they replenish, soften, and repair the skin. So all really powerful stuff. And guys, you can Actually, check out the Age Defying Dream Cream from Purity Woods. Just go to the show notes here, or if you're watching on YouTube, just go check out the link below. You can save up to 31% off on this product. I really think it's a complete blend of nature's ultimate collagen and elastin-boosting ingredients for the ultimate smooth, radiant, age-defying skin. And the only reason why I'm talking about this really is because this is what I use on my skin, and I've seen really good results with it. So guys, check that out. And as we transition here, we're going to talk about red light therapy. We talked about nutrition. We talked about some of the best foods uh, to be consuming, the foods to avoid, of course, the foods to consume. We talked about all the best ingredients topically to put on your skin, including you know, the age-defying dream cream that I really recommend. But then we also need to talk about other things like red light therapy. This is one of the best therapies you can actually do to support good skin production. Right. And so red light therapy has been shown to reduce wrinkles and age spots, prevent and repair acne and scarring. It reduces cellulite formation, improves collagen production, and improves psoriasis and eczema. And the reason why it does that is because it actually stimulates the mitochondria within the skin cells. Mitochondria is what produces all the energy. When we have a lot of oxidative stress, it damages the mitochondria. And now the, the cells, the skin cells are not able to produce energy effectively. They become, um, more pro-oxidant, meaning that they become older and they, um, are not able to produce energy effectively. They're not able to, they produce more oxidative stress and they become very dysfunctional, right? And this is how we end up with dysfunctional elastin and collagen tissue is when we have too many damaged mitochondria. So red light therapy, and especially when you combine it with infrared as well. Um, and these are just basically wavelengths. Red, we can see. Infrared, we can't. It's invisible light. But blue light, which is like what comes from our computer, is 470 nanometers. Green is 520. Yellow is 490. Red is 650 nanometers, roughly in that range. And it penetrates deep into the skin, past the dermis, the subcutaneous layer, and into the muscle right under your skin. And it's impacting all the mitochondria along its way, right? And helping, it's called photobiomodulation. So it's helping improve the energy production of all those mitochondria and stimulating autophagy, damage, you know, breaking down the older senescent and damaged mitochondria and repairing them and improving their overall function. And then infrared actually will get all the way down into the bones and joints, gets really deep. So I like combining red and infrared and getting exposure to that on a regular basis. We know red light therapy penetrates deep into that dermis layer and stimulates cells that produce collagen. We know as we age, we produce less collagen, which results in the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles due to thin, dry skin. But again, the red light is going to help penetrate in there, help us form new strong collagen with really good mitochondria. That new collagen moves to the surface of the skin, reducing fine lines and wrinkles. The increase in collagen production smooths the skin and reduces the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. So um, this is how it works. And this is how red light therapy can be really great therapy that you can be using on your skin, on your face, uh, different areas of your body that you want to improve the skin function. And how do you use red light therapy? Basically, you get a device. Okay, and I'll show you the device I recommend in just a minute. But you get about four to six inches from the device. Okay, so four to six inches roughly in that, that frame. If you're too close, it can cause a heating effect. And potentially, especially if your skin's really sensitive, that can actually increase inflammation. For most people, it's fine, but for some, it can actually drive up more inflammation. So I recommend four to six inches from the device. Begin with just one to two minutes per treatment area. 
some people just have really sensitive skin, kind of like exercise. You know, you don't want to do too much too quickly. So you want to gradually build up. So, you know, especially if you have sensitive skin, begin with one to two minutes per treatment area. You work up to about five to 15 minutes per treatment area. So if you're focusing on your face, you know, start one to two minutes and then work up to five to 15 minutes a day. Okay. So trying to do that daily, um, you know, it doesn't take too long out of your day, five to 15 minutes, right? So you might end up getting up to like, let's say 10 minutes. I think 10 minutes a day is an amazing uh, protocol. If, you know, if your skin is responding well to that, if you're noticing more inflammation or, um, you know, eczema or something like that, when you're using it, you might just be driving up too much inflammation. So you might want to work back, but most people I find do totally fine. You know, 99, I would say 99.5% of people have no issues. Like they feel great doing 10 to 15 minutes a day with this. So there's very small percentage of people that may have just more sensitive skin and they need a little bit less time or they need time to kind of work their way up. So that's fine. And, you know, you can obviously spot target, like just do your skin or just do, you know, the back of your legs where you have cellulite, or you can do whole body exposure, right? So you can get a whole body unit that you can, you know, turn on and basically get naked or in your underwear next to it. And, um, you know, that will, will drive up collagen production and drive up the, the mitochondria within all of those cells to reduce those fine lines, wrinkles, cellulite, things like that throughout the skin throughout your body. And then again, using it daily is optimal. You may not be able to use it every day, but you know, if you can at least do it three or four days a week, that's going to really help. Okay. That will really, really, really help move the needle in your direction, the way that you want it. So the unit that I like is the Mito Red. And uh, the reason why is because it's got the deep red. It's also got the near infrared. So it's got the both uh, types of, uh, uh, of, wavelengths, the, the deep red, as well as a near infrared. So really good for boosting collagen production, aiding skin conditions. And then the infrared is really good for, um, muscle recovery, cellular renewal and joint pain. So that combination works great. So I'll have a link below this video or in the show notes of the podcast. You can also go to my website, drjockers.com and look up red light therapy. I go through all the science research and also have a link to the Mito Red. And if you use a coupon code on their website, Dr. Jockers, all one word, all caps, just D-R-J-O-C-K-E-R-S, that will actually save you 5% on whatever device you want to get. So this is something I do on a regular basis. I've got a Mito Red at my house. I'm using it regularly, at least three or four days a week. And uh, it really makes a difference. And so I would recommend that, especially if you're concerned about aging skin. I would highly recommend that. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of this training. We talked about the best foods for, um, for good skin, skin health, right? For beautiful skin. We talked about the foods to avoid. We talked about different herbs, compounds, supplements, different, uh, you know, agents that can be really, really helpful for skincare. We talked about what to avoid when it comes to skincare. And we also talked about red light therapy for overall skin health. So we went through a lot. If you guys have questions, email us info at drjockers.com. Happy to help uh, answer an address or point you in the right direction. And thanks so much guys for being a part of our community and joining us here. Please share this with anybody that you know that you care about that is interested in improving their skin health. Be blessed everybody.